So 3.5, we can continue on with finding all zeros. And up till now, we've only found what we call real zeros. We're actually going to find all of them. So as I look at this polynomial, this x cubed, blah, 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 I see that I should have at most three zeros. So let me graph it and see what happens here. All right, here's a graph of it. And it looks like I only have one zero here at three. And this three makes sense because, right, factors of negative three, three is one of them. So I have only one zero. It feels like I should be able to have three. All right, let me, let me do some analysis here. Let me see what I can do. So let's have that three go into this. So I have one x cubed, negative three x squared, one x and a negative three. So bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So I took out an x minus three. So I know that one of my zeros was three. And I was left with, this was a cubic, so it shifts down, shifts down one degree. So that's an x squared, x squared plus one. So let me think about this x squared plus one, x squared plus one equals zero. I could use quadratic formula for that. You know, I could also just kind of solve it. Subtract one from both sides. X squared equals negative one. Square root it. X equals plus or minus the square root of negative one. Square root of negative one is i. Oh, so x could equal positive i or negative i. Okay, so look, I got some imaginary zeros. My zeros are three i and negative i. Well, no wonder they don't show up on the graph. There, there's no imaginary numbers on this graph. So what that means is if I were to uh, plug, plug i into this, I would get zero. Let me try that. i cubed minus three i squared plus i minus three. So let's see, i squared is negative one. So this is negative three times negative one. So this part's a plus three, plus i minus three. i cubed, i cubed is i squared times i. i squared is negative one, it's negative i. So this is negative i. Now notice what happens, negative i plus i is zero. Three plus negative three is zero, zero. So yeah, that works. Um, wow, so i can end up with these zeros that are imaginary, I can have imaginary zeros as well. And that actually gets us at what's called the fundamental theorem of algebra. And it actually is a little uh, anticlimactic for being the fundamental theorem. It has a lot of implications, but the theorem just says basically any polynomial has at least one complex zero. <laughs> That's it. Um, so that means, and remember complex numbers, a plus bi, where a could be zero, b could be zero. So all that the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us is that if you take any polynomial, it has at least one complex zero. Uh, this one had three of them, three i and negative i. All right, so let's take another uh, equation and find all of its zeros. All right, here it is. Let's find all the zeros for that. Um, possibilities would be plus or minus one, two, or four. And I could graph it first, take a look at it. Um, well, let me give it a go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try negative two. I'm gonna try it because I know that it works. Um, I have one x cubed, I have zero x squared, I have neb two x's and four. The only reason why I know it works is because I made up the problem. There's, I don't have any sort of insight here. So I bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, zero. Cool, so I took out an x plus two. I'm left with an x squared minus two x plus two. Now I'm not gonna be able to factor that. So let me run it through quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two a which is negative negative two is two, negative two squared is four, minus eight over two. Four minus eight is negative four, 
Oh, interesting. The square root of negative 4, we know that. That's 2i. So I have 2 uh, plus, or I'm going to write it over here, 2. I'm going to try to write it over here. Plus or minus 2i over 2. These are both divisible by 2, leaving me 1 plus or minus i. So my zeros are negative 2, 1 plus i, and 1 minus i. It's interesting. Notice when I got this this complex number, this one came with it, right? And the plus minus comes with it because it came out of the quadratic formula. Like these are going to come out of the quadratic formula. That actually tells me something. And it tells me something about my, my conjugate zeros. Um, if a plus bi is a zero, then a minus bi must also be a zero. And again, notice that happens because of the quadratic formula, right? I have this plus or minus that. If I'm sorry, this plus or minus that. So if one of them comes, the other one is also going to be one. So if I know that one plus i is a zero, one minus i has to also be a zero. We already know that negative 2 is one of the zeros. So we know that we could have, I'm going to change the color here so you can see it. Um, x plus 2 is one of our, one of our factors. Um, now this x squared minus 2x plus 2, we couldn't factor that. But we did use quadratic formula to get these zeros. So notice that another one of our factors could be x minus 1 plus i right? Just x minus the zero. And then the other one could be x minus one minus i. So ideally, like if I knew how to factor into complex, you know, into these complex type of numbers, I could do this. Or I could use quadratic formula to get there. This would be fully factored form and linear. It would be okay if I asked you to factor it to leave it to this, because getting it into this form is a bit much. But it does... Um, give us a factor theorem. So it gives us um, any polynomial of degree n can be factored into um, x minus c1, x minus c2, dot, 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 out to x minus cn. So if it's a degree n, we should be able to factor it into n pieces where each of these c, uh, c whatever, are complex numbers. So if I have this polynomial right here, I know that um, I have three zeros, three, negative two, and negative three. And I know that um, this one right here has a multiplicity of three. This negative two has a multiplicity of two, and this has a multiplicity of one. Like I wrote this as x minus three cubed, x plus two squared, etc. I could have written it all out the way out, right? I could have gone like x minus three times x minus three times x minus three. times x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. Notice that gives me all five pieces. And I can see that I have a little local parabola here and a little cubic, little local cubic here. And it's not exactly that, it just looks like it. So I've already put this into Desmos. And you can see uh, the x plus 3, the negative 3, looks linear there. You can tell that the minus 2 looks like a approximates a parabola there, and the x minus 3 looks like it approximates a cubic there. So we only have three zeros, but some of them are repeated. So that gives us um, our last little piece, which is our zeros theorem. 
Maybe I'll do this a different color too, just so it shows up better. Um, polynomial of degree n. We can say that it has exactly n roots. Notice that's much more specific than our fundamental theory of algebra that says there's at least one. We can say it has exactly n if um, we count those multiplicities. So in other words, in this case, a root of three happens three times. So there's three of them. So three, three, and three. There's two of these, negative two, negative two, and there's one of these, negative three. Now you don't need to list them out, but if we count them this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's six of them. I think I might've said five earlier. I guess I couldn't count. So there's, there's six of them. So there we go. We've got these, which actually are results of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, I want to find all zeros to this polynomial right here. Oh boy. Um, okay. Well, if I look at my possibilities, I've got factors of eight over factors of one. So plus or minus one, two, four, and eight. At least for the real ones, that doesn't tell me anything about complex. Actually, just for the rational ones, really, it doesn't tell me anything about irrational ones either. So one, two, four, and eight, positive, negative are my possibilities. I'm going to graph this, see where it ends up. All right, as I take a peek at that, negative one, negative two. It looks like it just happens at negative two. And I can't tell if that's linear there or if that's some kind of cubic there. It kind of, it doesn't look straight, right? It looks like it might be approximating a cube. So it might actually happen three places there. Well, let me see what happens. So I know that negative two should be one of them. Notice I said I know it should be. I, I don't know it for certain. But I'm going to go with negative 2, and that's definitely a possibility. So negative 2 going into 1x cubed, 4x squared, 8x's, and an 8. And so bring down the 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. Great. So since my 0 was negative 2, my factor would be x plus 2. And what I'm left with is x squared plus 2x plus four. So let's go ahead and do what we can to uh, find zeros from, from this piece that's, that's right here. I'm going to make that a little thinner. And uh, so I could try and factor that. And I think that um, I'm not going to be able to factor that. So I'm going to run it through quadratic formula. Cool. Okay. So as I go to uh, use quadratic formula for this, I can tell that a is one, b is two, c is four. So let me plug that in. Uh, remember quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c. And that whole thing is over two a. So negative two plus or minus square root, two squared is four, uh, minus 16 over two, over two. So let's see, that's negative two plus or minus square root uh, 4 minus 16 is negative 12. Uh, negative 12, I can break that into uh, negative 4 times 3. So this becomes negative 2 plus or minus. Uh, square root of 4 is 2. I'm still square rooting the 3. And square root of negative 1 is i over 2. And then notice that these are both divisible by 2. So I'll write my zeros up here, uh, 1 plus root 3i, 1 minus root 3i. And then I already found the one that was negative 2. So there's my three zeros. Notice two of them are complex imaginary numbers. So they're imaginary, which actually ties back to that graph. Notice the graph only passed it in one spot. It still matches my zeros theorem. A polynomial of degree n has exactly 
n roots uh, if we count multiplicities. This has three roots, uh, three zeros, negative two, one plus root three i, one minus root three i. All right, x to the fourth plus two x squared minus eight. Now you might uh, see this, you might see that you can factor this. It's not a quadratic, but it's in quadratic form. You might see that you could factor this to x squared plus four, uh, x squared minus two to get there. Um, because if you think of the x squared as just the thing, this x to the fourth is x squared squared. So you basically have something like a squared plus 2a minus 8, factor it. Um, or you can do some synthetic division to get there. I'm just going to go from here. I'm fine in zeros. So when is this equal to 0? And when is this equal to 0? So subtract 4. Square root x equals plus or minus. The square root of negative 4 is 2i. And on this one, add 2 to both sides. Square root plus or minus root 2. So I have my four zeros. They are 2i, negative 2i, negative root 2, and root 2. I don't think you're going to get there by synthetic division. I said maybe you could before, but um, I think that on this one, you're going to have to recognize it as a quadratic form in order to get there from there. So now let's go the other way. Uh, we're going to be given some zeros, and we will build a polynomial for them. So how about I say the zeros are i, negative i, 2, and negative 2. All right, let's, uh, let's write what we would have then. We would have uh, x minus i, x plus i. And this makes sense to me that I'd have i and negative i. Those are conjugates. They have to come in conjugate pairs. And then I have x uh, minus 2 from this next one and x plus 2. And these do not have to come together. They just happen to in this problem. <clears throat> All right, so now I have four things that I need to multiply together. I should end up with an x to the fourth in my answer. I've got four zeros. Um, doing that, I think that it might be easiest to multiply these together, multiply these together, and then multiply those two answers together because these are difference of squares. So notice if I go x times x, that's x squared. Um, my middle term is going to drop out here because I have negative i times x, negative i x, and x times i, i x, right? Those add to, uh, add to zero. And then I have negative i times i, which is negative i squared. Remember, i squared is negative one. So this is negative negative one, which is positive one. So there's what those first two multiply to. Similarly, if I multiply these two together, this will be x squared minus 4. Nope. Uh, yeah, minus 4. Sorry. x times x is x squared. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. And then notice my middle drops out. Negative 2x, 2x. All right, so now I'll go from here to multiply. So x squared times x squared, x to the fourth. x squared times negative 4, negative 4, x squared. 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times negative 4 is minus 4. So I have x to the 4th minus 3x squared minus 4. And that would have those zeros. If I wasn't sure about it, I could plug them in and check. All right, let's do another one. Um, Three, two plus i, and two minus i. I have three zeros, so I should end up with an x cubed. All right, let me write my my piece as x minus three, x minus that, so x minus two plus i, and x minus that, so x minus two minus i. So I have x minus three, and then I have I'm going to distribute this negative into here x minus 2 minus i, distribute this negative into here, 
x minus 2 plus i. All right. So there's a couple ways I could multiply this out. I'm going to multiply those together first. Um, and I'm going to show you two ways to, to do this multiplication. One of them is just this brute force method. Distribute everything to everything else. And it might be easiest to keep track of it if you do it in a grid. So I have an x, a minus 2, and a minus i from this one right here. And then I have an x, a negative 2, and a positive i. And then just multiply everything by everything. So x times x, x squared. Negative 2 times x, negative 2x. Negative i times x, negative ix. x times negative 2, negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative i times negative 2 is positive 2i. x times i is xi. Negative 2 times i is negative 2i. Negative i times i is negative i squared, which is positive 1. Negative, negative 1. Now here's what's nice. Things cancel out. Uh, I didn't mean for that to happen. Um, negative xi and positive xi adds to 0. Negative 2i and 2i adds to 0. So notice that your i's end up dropping out. And then you get x squared minus 4x. 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 5. And then that's times x minus 3. And then to finish this, you, you distribute all of this into that. I'm going to show you another way to do this multiplication. It's kind of this clever little... Uh, clever little grouping you can do. So notice I have x minus 2 minus i times x minus 2 plus i. So what I want you to do is think about grouping the x minus 2s. And we did that because they're the same as each other. And now what I basically have is like a difference of squares. Something minus i times the same thing plus i. So if I multiply this together, I get x minus 2 squared. I'll worry about that in a, in a minute. Notice my middle term drops out. This would be negative i times x minus 2. This would be positive i times x minus 2. That's going to add to 0. And at the end, I'll have negative i times i, which is negative i squared, which is positive 1. Now, x minus 2 squared... That's x minus 2 times x minus 2. So that's x squared uh, minus 4x plus 4. And then I have plus 1, and notice I get that. So you can do it either way. But our problem isn't done because we need the full polynomial. So now I need to distribute this to that. I could do it in another grid. I could distribute everything to everything. I'll do the, I'll go the distribu distribution route. x times x squared is x cubed x times negative 4x, negative 4x squared, x times 5 is 5x. Negative 3 times x squared, negative 3x squared, negative 3 times negative 4x is positive 12x, negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and I get x cubed minus 7x squared plus 17x minus 15. There we go. And I could graph it and at least see the, the zero, the three zero in it. All right, I just want to do a couple more examples of this. So there are my zeros. I have a zero of negative two, but it has a multiplicity of three and a zero of zero. So let me think about this. This would be x minus two. No, it would be x plus two cubed times x. All right. Um, so this is x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x. So to multiply that out, I would multiply these ones out. That's going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4. And you could go either route. You could put this at this x plus 2 here into there now if you want. I'm going to throw this x into here, make this an x squared plus 2x. And now I'm going to distribute everything to everything. 
Um, another thing is, if you have your, your cubic relationship memorized, you could just write it straight out from there. But if you don't, that's all right. x times x squared, x to the fourth x squared times 2x plus 2x cubed, 4x times x squared, 4x cubed, 4x times 2x plus 8x squared, 4x, 4 times x squared, 4x squared, uh, 4 times 2x plus 8x. So this would be x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 12x squared plus 8x. There's our polynomial right there. And notice it is a degree 4 because we have four zeros if you count this negative 2 three times. All right, one last one. I'm going to tell you it has a degree of 3, and its zeros are um, 1 half and 3 minus i. All right, so I've only given two of them, but it's a degree 3. So one might be led to believe then that one of them, one of these two must have a multiplicity of 2, but that's not the case. The, here is the rub right here, 3 minus i. Remember, if a complex number comes in that has an imaginary part, its conjugate must come in as well. So if I have 3 minus i, I will also have 3 plus i. And there are my three zeros. So just because it wasn't explicitly given it to me doesn't mean it's not there. So let's write this out. Uh, this would have come from uh, x minus 3 plus i. This would have come from an x minus 3 minus i. And this 1 half. Now I, I guess I could write x minus 1 half. That's okay. Um, but I think it's going to be less work for me if I think of this as a 2x minus 1. Do you see how that would give me, do you see how that would give me a 1 half? 2x minus 1 equals 0. Add the 1. Divide by the 2. I <laughs> switched pens. Uh, 1 half. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the 2x minus 1 here. All right. I need to multiply it out. It's going to be convenient for me to multiply these two out. So I'm going to think of this as x. Distribute that negative. Minus 3 plus i. Distribute that negative. x minus 3 minus i. And I'm going to do my grouping. So I'm going to think of this as x minus 3 as a group. And I have a difference of squares. I'm just writing this because it goes there. But I need to keep. So this would be x minus 3 times x minus 3 is x minus 3 squared. The middle term is going to drop out. i times negative i is negative i squared, which is positive 1. If I multiply this out, it's x squared minus 6x plus 9, and then plus one more. So that will be plus 10. All right, and now I've got to do some distributing and go from there. So 2x times x squared, 2x cubed, 2x times negative 6x, negative 12x squared, 2x times 10 is what? 20x. Negative 1 times x squared, negative x squared positive 6x, negative 10. This adds to negative 13. This adds to 26. There it is. All right, good luck with these. Um, stick with it. Give, give those practice problems a try. Get yourself real good at this. And um, send me any questions that you have. Message me.